Hi, this is Geert Jan from the NetBeans team. In this screencast you're going to be equipped to be smart about migrating your code to Java 8. What does that mean? Well, on the level of the Java language, Java 8 brings with it some very profound changes. Not just changes in syntax, but changes in the way that you code and the way that you think about your code. The language changes in Java 8 are the most profound language changes that have ever been brought into the Java language. There are really two grand themes overarching the language changes in Java 8. Firstly, Java as a language has a need to be modernized, even if only simply on the level that client code should no longer need to tell the compiler how to process data. Instead, all that client code should do is say what should happen and then let internal libraries handle the processing. Secondly, multi-core processors are now widespread and open up the possibility to split intensive tasks into chunks that can be performed in parallel to maximize the use of computational power. These are the two overarching themes and everything that follows can be understood in this context. In this screencast we're not going to cover all the Java 8 language changes, but just the most important ones, those dealing most directly with these two themes shown here in red, of functional programming over imperative programming and parallel processing over sequential processing. To make the kind of incisive changes to the language intended for Java 8, some preparatory work had to be done. A simple limitation to Java language renewal is that making changes to Java interfaces automatically breaks all code that depends on it. A very revolutionary early change in Java 8 therefore enabled interfaces to be extended, supported by a new keyword. As a result, not only the radical language changes in Java 8, but changes in the future are now possible, meaning that the Java language as a whole has now been retrofitted to continue to be able to evolve into the future. Secondly, the notion of functional interfaces has been introduced. These have actually always existed, but have been particularly cumbersome to code in Java. An interface such as Runnable, with a single abstract method, run, should be far simpler to work with than has been the case in Java, and form the focus of the Lambda enhancements in Java 8. A new annotation has been introduced, functional interface, which, like the override annotation, is used to declare the intention of something to be used in a certain way, in this case the intention of an interface to be functional and hence exposed to the new lambda syntax. The idea behind lambdas is quite simple. Most of the code in anonymous inner classes, where those classes are functional, such as in the case of the JavaFX event handler, is really superfluous. Since the compiler knows that the set on mouse pressed method can only accept an event handler, our client code should not need to specify that. And since the event handler is functional, that is, has only one method to be implemented, there should be no need for client code to name that method explicitly. Instead, in Java 8, you can remove all that boilerplate code and replace it with a lambda expression. All that is left is a reference to the event handler, and that's all that should be needed. In the IDE, converting anonymous inner classes to Lambda expressions is easy. The IDE automatically identifies them in your code. Click the light bulb or press the related keyboard shortcut and then press enter on the Java hint that appears. The IDE will do the rest to convert the structure to a Lambda expression for you. Let's see how that works in a small demo. Notice that here we have an anonymous inner class that the hint shows us that we can convert this to a lambda expression and that if you put the cursor inside the lambda expression we can switch back to an anonymous inner class. There are several functional interfaces that already exist in Java such as runnable, comparable and event handler. However, Java 8 introduces several new functional interfaces. As you have seen, such interfaces are compatible with lambda expressions as well as your own functional interfaces or those provided by third-party libraries. However, Java 8 brings with it a number of new functional interfaces that can turn out to be very useful. Each exists to provide a very narrow and specific function, like runnable, 
such as the predicate function, which returns a boolean and can therefore be used to test whether something is true. These new functional interfaces are found in the new Java Util Function package. When you are migrating your code to Java 8, it helps to spend some time studying each of these interfaces and to research how they can apply to your existing code. Think about runnable and comparable and then examine the new functional interfaces and try to see their similarities in terms of their specific purpose. Function takes an input and returns an output. Predicate takes an input and returns a boolean as output. Consumer takes an input and doesn't return anything. Supplier has no input and returns an output. While binary operator takes two inputs and returns one output. Primitive specializations exist for performance reasons to avoid boxing and unboxing. You will see these in action throughout the screencast. The new Java Util Stream package provides utilities to support functional style operations on streams of values. A stream is a pipe defined by a series of operations that aggregate a result. Each value is like a log in a stream of water. Some operations process the value and others filter it out. No intermediate value or intermediate storage is needed. Intermediate operations are lazy and only kick in when the terminal operation eagerly makes the stream flow. The most powerful aspect of this mechanism is that streams can be sequential or parallel, which is simply a question of including yet another intermediate operation in the stream. Be aware that the stream class is very rich, has several specializations and very many useful methods. When you are migrating your code to Java 8, you should really spend some time researching these methods and trying them out in small test cases to truly see the power of streams. The range of functionality that streams provide, once you are familiar with them, can make your code not only parallel, but also fluent with the style in some ways being comparable to builders. Streams bring the power of functional programming to Java. For example, forget the for loop forever because the compiler knows how to do looping. Internal iteration via the for each method on a stream passes the handling of the for loop to an internal class which does the looping for you. As a result, you can simply state that you need a loop to be done and then move on to the next piece of code. The three pieces of code you see here show the progression from a for loop construct to a stream with a lambda, ending with an example of a method reference, which is a short form of a lambda, and we will look at that more later in this screencast. Notice also that you can instruct internal libraries to handle concurrent processing if parallel is one of the intermediate operations in the stream. The slightly dense but expressive code that you see here is what you can expect to be confronted with when using Java 8. Notice that the code says exactly what needs to be said. It is very compact and there is no boilerplate code. It can probably be even tighter than it is right now. For example, the if statement could be handled by a predicate and as part of the stream. The optional class is also new. It may or may not contain a non-null value. If a value is present, is present will return true, and get will return the value. Migrating to streams means identifying constructs in your code that involve collection classes. Where you have a collection, you can expose it as a stream, and then replace loops and iterators with operations on the stream. The IDE provides the tools to do this for you. Rather than doing a manual text search through your code, you can let the IDE analyze the semantics of your code and suggest candidates for conversion to you. Furthermore, the IDE can do the conversion too. Let's see how that works in a small demo. Notice that the IDE detects that a functional operation can be applied here. And when you put the cursor in the lambda expression, you can further fine tune the lambda expression depending on your style and needs. Method references provide an alternative way to express lambdas. Where a method already exists to perform an operation, 
a method reference can be used instead of a lambda. Method references can help in making your code even more compact and provide an extra tool in your toolbox when doing functional style programming. As with the other language constructs relating to Java 8, the IDE gives you a hint in your code whenever a method reference can be used. Once we have converted to a functional operation, we can put the cursor in the lambda, and then we can convert from the lambda to the member reference. Rather than you manually searching through your code and converting it line by line to lambdas, functional operations and method references, you can let the IDE do the work for you. It can search through all your projects simultaneously and its refactoring tools can quickly and accurately find all the appropriate patterns for you. It lets you review all its proposed changes and then you can let it do all the conversions for you at the same time. Let's take a look at how you can use the IDE's refactoring tools to automate the Java 8 upgrade process across predefined scopes. Either from the project or from the main menu bar, go to the refactoring menu and then in the inspect and transform dialog specify which inspections you want to apply. Here you can see that the JDK 8 profile has a lot of various inspections included that don't relate directly to JDK 8 but to JDK 7. So for our JDK 8 work we're just going to exclude everything that isn't directly related to JDK 8 so we are left with the lambda inspection and from the general category we choose the functional operation inspection. These two inspections together do everything we need. We then set a scope, in this case all the open projects, and then we start the process of analysis. So now the IDE goes through all of the source files within the selected scope and identifies all the places where changes can be made. And then, in the refactoring window, proposes to you all the places where refactoring can be done, either to lambdas or to method references or to functional operations. Once you see the list, go through it, inspect each item carefully to see that you get what you want to achieve, and once you've gone through all of the list and examined everything, you can click the refactoring button to refactor everything in one go, if that is what you need to do. Getting started with the tools you have seen in this screencast is easy. Download NetBeans IDE 8. Download JDK 8. Register the JDK in the IDE. Set the JDK on the projects where you want to use it. Change the source setting. And then you're ready to upgrade to Java 8. Community feedback on the tools the IDE provides for lambdas, functional operations and method references have been very positive. If you have feedback too, use Twitter or blog about your experiences in leveraging the latest Java 8 features via the JDK's refactoring tools. In summary, the language changes that are the central component of the Java 8 language enhancements can revolutionize the way you program in Java. Depending on the extent to which you want or need to use the new functional capabilities of Java, you have a range of new idioms and tools to put the pieces together. The next steps are to download NetBeans IDE and to become active or even more active in the worldwide community of NetBeans users. Finally, many sources have been consulted in putting this stream of information together. All have been processed, some have been filtered, and the best of these are summed up here. There is a lot of information to help you on your way in incorporating functional style programming in your Java applications. Have fun with Java 8.